Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up course play to harvest a field with one or more combines and run one or more uh, unloaders automatically. So one of the first things I like to do when I uh, get to a field and start off a new course play course is just uh, open it up a little bit. This is going to let me get my equipment onto the field without uh, dealing with running over crops or anything like that. Once you've got a little bit of space opened up on the field, if you just put your uh, vehicle, your combine here in this case, onto the field itself and then open up the worker screen, you're going to hit the create jobs button and we're going to come into the upper right hand here and you're going to scroll until you see course play field work. And you'll notice that my field is selected in white here because it has detected that my vehicle is on this field and it's going to set this as the field that we're going to be doing our work if for some reason your field isn't selected in white like this you can just click this field position and then you'll get a pick a target location and you're going to be able to just pick a spot on the map where you're going to be able to uh, start your course off on and this is also going to be the starting point of the course so in our case i'm just going to put it in the lower left hand corner here and then similarly, if you want to use the in-game auto drive type feature, uh, you can set this target position. And this is the position that the worker is going to drive to before he starts the job. In our case, oh, we don't need to set that, but uh, you could definitely set that if you wanted to. And so with a field position set, we're going to come down to the bottom here and select open slash close course generator. And once we open the course generator, you can see I get a, a number of options for the, setting up this course. However, this is the basic uh, mode options. There's a lot more options that are available in course play. And so before I go through what all of these do, I'm going to show you how to turn on the advanced mode because there are a few options in there that I find uh, particularly useful, especially when harvesting. And so if you click on this uh, double gear course play icon, it's going to take you into the global settings for course play. And there's an expert mode uh, user setting here. If I activate this expert mode, and then come back over here and open the course play generator again you'll notice i now have quite a few additional uh options in here and we'll go ahead and talk about what all of these options are and then you can decide if these additional features are something that uh, you would find useful for you or not uh, the first is the working width. Most of the time, course play does a great job of detecting the width of your tool automatically. But if you get into a situation where you find that uh, the course generated just doesn't seem to match the width of your implement, there are cases where you may want to adjust and uh, fine tune this number. Uh, multiple tools. This is where we're going to be able to select how many combines we want this course to be made for. Uh, we'll start off by making a course for a single combine and I'll show you how that looks and then I'll switch over and we'll do one for two combines. Uh, number of headlands is depend how many times around the field the uh, worker should go before it starts doing uh, the longer rows. I find with a typical like 12 row style implement, uh, two headland passes is usually enough. Um, you always want to start with the headlands when you're harvesting, so it's going to take all of that corn off or, or the crops off around the field. Uh, I tend to prefer sharp headland corners. Uh, so that you can actually uh, get these really hard corners. But if you have a field that's just a lot more curves and not a lot of hard corners, you may want to use either the smooth or the round uh, options here. Uh, so you'll, you'll have to play around with these. Um, again, I find sharp to generally be the uh, easiest to use. Uh, you can set which direction around the field you're going to start doing your headlands. I usually leave it on clockwise because then the auger for unloading the combine is on my left and always available. Um, headland overlap is one of the advanced uh, settings here. And this is how much it should overlap on the headlands to try and make sure that you're not leaving a ton of extra crops around when you're turning on corners and things like that. And then we get into uh, one of the most important settings for uh, the harvester is how do you want to do your field? centers by default. I think it's actually on um, up down rows and this will work a lot like a standard uh, worker where it's just going to go up and down on the same rows and work from one side of the field to the other. For harvesting 
Um, I tend to find that you've got two different uh, options here that, that work really well, either spiral, which will go around the field and just keep going around and around. And then the one that I prefer to use most often is called a lands mode. Essentially, you're going to take your headlands off and then we'll cut into the middle of the field and uh, take so many chunks off at a time. And so this is the mode that I'm gonna demonstrate today. Lastly, we've got racetrack, which is a combination of lands mode and spiral where it's going to cut in by the rows per land value, but rather than staying in the middle section between the two crop lands, it will continue to go in a circle, taking a pass off the outside of the land that it created, and then the main part of the field, meaning that the pipe on the combine will end up facing the field half of the time. I've never found this to be a particularly useful mode for harvesting. Uh, I'm gonna start off by leaving our up down row direction here as automatic, and it'll attempt to find the best way to uh, do the long rows on a given field, but I tend to find on most normally shaped fields, setting this to longest edge uh, can be the better idea. And so we're gonna leave it on automatic. Um, I also have the ability to set it on manual and uh, I can define which angle on the map I want the combine to go. This can be really useful for oddly shaped fields. You can see the uh, angle information is here with zero degrees will always be north or the top of the map. Uh, but we're going to leave it on automatic and I'll show you how that works here in just a second. And then here we've got descriptions. Rows to skip is uh, how many rows we should skip when we're doing our up and down rows. Or rows per land is when I'm using the lands mode, um, how big each block should be. Um, I tend to do around six. I find it works pretty good. Then I'm taking chunks of the field off as we go. So we're going to set it this way and I'll show you how that works. The island bypass mode it comes up if you have um, areas in the middle of your field that have say trees or a uh, body of water or something like that. Um, there's some different modes here as far as uh, um, simple bypass, we'll just try to drive around those islands. No bypass, you'll drive straight through them. So if you just have some grassways or something that come into your field, uh, you can drive through those. Um, circle means that you should go all the way around that and kind of clear a, almost like a headland pass around it. Uh, and so I tend to just leave those on simple. Course play is pretty good at uh, figuring out how to handle it. And then field margin is another advanced setting where you can uh, essentially reduce the field size. So if you have a fence all the way around your field and you find that your uh, combine's getting stuck on that, you can reduce the size of your field a little bit in course play and uh, just keep the implements off of uh, the edges so that you don't run into things as uh, often. So after you've got these settings where you like them, you can go ahead and hit this generate field work course. And you can see here, automatic mode was able to uh, determine the uh, fact that the best way to do this field is to just go straight up and down. Uh, sometimes you might get uh, a course where they're angled and you wanna go straight. That's when you could come back in here and instead of having automatic, you could say longest edge and it, that would straighten these out or you could go manual and just pick the uh, degree that you want those courses to go on. So it really doesn't matter. Um, you can do whatever you want for that. And then once you've got the field generated here, you can just uh, hit escape to exit out of those. And you can see here, I've got my start point right next to my combine all ready to go. You've got just a couple of settings here to pay attention to. This yellow eyeball means show me my start and ending points. Um, the ending point for this, you can see on the uh, minimap is over on the other end of the field is where the course is gonna end. Those are the only points it's gonna show you. If you tap on this again, the blue eyeball is gonna show you uh, the track starting with uh, the waypoint that you're on now and a little bit ahead. So you got kind of a look ahead mode so you know where the combine's gonna be going. The green eyeball is gonna show you the entire course at one time which I kind of find to be a little overwhelming, but sometimes it can be useful to see where all of the uh, waypoints are. And then you can turn them all off as well. I generally, when I'm starting off, I like to leave the uh, start endpoints on. And then after that, you've got just a few settings here. We've got uh, the ability to select which of the waypoints you want to start the course on. You have first waypoint, which is what we're gonna use. You have last waypoint, which if you'd uh, been harvesting, it'll uh, go to the last waypoint that you had uh, uh, tick by on the course already, which we don't have one yet. You can go to nearest waypoint. So if you've 
got a machine and you needed to uh, take it back somewhere to unload it or you needed to refuel it and you want to get it started, you could uh, turn on your waypoints here, drive up to one of these and just hit go and it's going to grab the nearest waypoint for you. And uh, then we're back to first waypoint here. So I'm going to go ahead and just drive over here and show you how easy this is. We can just go ahead and hit play on first waypoint and the combine's going to drive over here to the first waypoint and off it goes. It's really that simple. And again, we made it more complicated by going through all the options. But you can see here an example of that sharp corner. It came up square to the edge and then it's going to back up and make the turn here after it's uh, gotten that corner taken care of. And then it's just going to uh, come over here and imagine, if you will, that there was already corn here. It would be just uh, kind of chopping out this whole uh, corner for us, cleaning it out, making it all very nice so that we can uh, get some other equipment in here and do things with it. And so this is one of the reasons that I really like to have the sharp corner mode uh, turned on because I feel like it just uh, does a more natural uh, job with the combine. It kind of feels like real life how I would attempt to take a corner like that out. And then you can see we're just going to keep going on down the field here and follow this course until we get full or we get done. You can see here I'm dropping a straw swath. Now, this particular map has a, a straw swath for corn turned on right now. That's not something that we particularly want during the tutorial here. And it's really up to you. Maybe you want straw, maybe you don't. So we're going to come in here to the menu. And there's just a couple of additional settings here that uh, really matter for... Uh, course play drivers, especially when harvesting. I always like to turn on only turning on field so that we uh, keep the combine on the field and we don't go uh, flying off into ditches and stuff when we're turning around. I like to avoid driving on the crops. Uh, I, and I like to allow uh, pathfinding when I'm going in reverse and in on turns just to help me uh, try to, again, stay on the field and not uh, do anything crazy. I do tend to like to raise my tools late and lower them early, uh, keeping the header down for as long as possible does uh, tend to help out with picking things up. And when I get down to the combine settings, these are some important uh, settings for combine specifically. The first being stop while unloading. Um, this is something you can do if you have uh, smaller fields with shorter rows and you would like your combine to just stop and wait while it's unloading rather than trying to unload on the go. Um, we also have the ability to do uh, combine self unload where the combine will drive over to a trailer that it finds on the field and unload it on its own. But this doesn't work with multi tool mode. And I, my goal here is to demo having an automatic unloader driving alongside you. So uh, we're not going to look at this particular mode today, but really it's as easy as turning this on. And if you only have a single combine in the field, it'll drive over and uh, unload into a truck on its own. Unload on first headland. This is whether or not the combine should make an attempt to call an unloader and have it unload while you're going around on the very first pass. Uh, this really depends on how much space you have around you on the field. If you can get an unloader to drive alongside you while you're doing the first headland pass, this can work. Otherwise, you might want to disable this setting uh, to keep the unloader from crashing into trees and such. And then lastly, the straw swath setting, which is the one that uh, reminded me to come in and look at these all, is whether or not you want to drop a uh, straw swath. And so you have active headlands disabled, but it'll drop it everywhere else and deactivated. And so the headland disabled function is really easy if uh, you're dropping a swath, swath that would cause a lot of issues for you when you're turning around and such. You can still drop the straw on the uh, main part of the field without doing the headlands. And so it's nice to have those options. Lastly, you can adjust what the maximum available speeds are for doing uh, either field work, driving on the field normally, uh, turning, reversing, and uh, as you approach a silo to unload. Uh, I'm gonna leave these all on the default values. I don't tend to mess with them a lot. Occasionally, I'll come in and adjust turn and reversing numbers, but uh, for what we're doing, it shouldn't really matter. And this is a great opportunity to just show off the ability to set this to nearest waypoint, Oh, and or I could do last waypoint. Both of these should do the same thing. I'll, I always like to use nearest because we're on this track right here and I'm going to hit play and the combine should just pick up where it left off 
and start combining down uh, this row. So this is how I would do this for a single combine on a field. We're gonna stop this combine though, and I'm gonna go all the way back to the beginning of the field here, and we're gonna set up a multi-combine course just to uh, show off how I would uh, do this same setup with two uh, combines, and you can just extrapolate that to more than two if you want at some point in the future. Um, I forget how, what the maximum number of tools is, but I think you can have at least four, if not more, on uh, a field at the same time. I'm going to click this little uh, no sign to delete my current course. And then just like before, if we come in here and I hit create job, field work job, I'm going to move this uh, field position back down into the corner like I had it before. I'm going to open this and instead of one tool, we're going to do two tools. Now, here's one important thing when I have two tools or more selected. And if I just click through this, it looks like five tools is currently the limit. Uh, I'm going to select two tools because we have two combines we want to use. The number of headlands is the number of headlands that each tool should take. So in this case, I'm gonna go down to one headland because this is going to give me two total headland passes, one for each tool. I still wanna start on the headland. All these other settings are exactly the same. Um, I don't need to change anything from what I had before. Uh, I am going to uh, leave the up down rows on automatic and if I hit generate you can see I've generated a course that looks very similar to the other one except that uh, I get just one line around my headland here and that's because with two tools I'm going to have a left and a right. And so you can see here, if I select first waypoint over here on this side, I have left with a one for tool number one and right with a one for the first lane on the left or the right of the field here, right? So because we're going clockwise, I'm gonna start on the left with my very first machine here. I'm gonna start on the first waypoint and I'm gonna hit go. And this combine will just come over here and get started on this very first uh, waypoint. And you can see here it's going to try and uh, get lined up as uh, good as it can to get going on that corner spot. So sometimes it'll have to turn around so it can come at that from the best angle. There we go. And so while that combine gets going, and so now that I've got this guy moving, you can see a total time here. It's going to take me 56 minutes to harvest this uh, whole map as long as the combine keeps moving. These estimates are just estimates you're going to find in general. It's probably going to take a bit longer than that. In order to get this same course over onto my other combine, there's two different ways I can do that. Um, the easiest way is to just hit this copy button and you can see that I've copied this temporary course. And then if I uh, jump over into the other combine here, you can see this is lit up with green. I can hit that button and it pastes that course in. And I now have the ability to start this combine off on the first waypoint on the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and get him started on this by just driving over here and then pushing go. And before we go too far, I need to come in here and remember to uh, adjust my combine settings so I can deactivate the straw swath and you can see I can do that while he's driving and it's shut that right off and then the other settings once you have multiple tools going on a course you'll see this multi-tool setting section and we have convoy distance which can be anywhere between 40 and 400 uh, feet in our case and so we're set up to be 246 feet away from the uh, vehicle in front of us. So if that combine gets full and stops, this combine is going to wait uh, 246 feet behind him until uh, he starts going again, which is uh, really useful and important for uh, when we get our unloaders going. Now, before we get our grain carts going, you can see this combine is uh, getting close to full. He's at 95%. And so when he hits 95%, he's going to do what is called cutting in. And so he has stopped harvesting. He's going to back up because uh, course play doesn't know if this is uh, trees or something else alongside this field. And it's going to cut into the row next to it in such a way that now a grain cart can come down this part that's already harvested and unload this combine. And so this is a great uh, way to kind of show off how some of these things are going to work. 
and then if I jump right into this combine, we'll see that as it gets closer to the combine in front of it here, about 246 feet away with the convoy mode, it's going to uh, detect that that combine is in its path and stop and just wait until it gets out of the way here. So you can see it's already slowing down to three miles an hour and it just kind of inches forward until it gets to that waiting distance and it'll just come to a complete stop here and wait until that combine is out of the way. And there's really two things that need to get done to set up uh, grain carts to work here with uh, course play. The first thing that you need for the unloader to work correctly is for it to be set on a field. And so we're gonna drive into this field here and I'm gonna go ahead and click this uh, target and we're gonna target field three. And so I'm just gonna click field position and click it right here into uh, field three so that it's got this white outline around it. And I can either just click start job here or if I'm escaped out um, and I'm on the field, you can see it's locked into this unload combine mode. I can just push the go button. And when you hit the go button or the start job button on the other screen, you can see it's uh, detecting that there's a combine on this field that needs to be unloaded and it's going to uh, find its way out there. Now you'll notice I'm only going 12 miles an hour right now. It's a little bit slow. And that is when we come in here to the uh, vehicle settings, you'll remember I pointed to these speeds. This is the one time where I do like to crank up my field speed, usually to, you know, 18, 20 miles an hour. It depends on what you're driving with. You'll see that this uh, grain cart driver is just going to make its way down here until it catches up with uh, one of these combines. If we only had the one combine here, it would obviously go to the front one first. I'm not sure which one it's going to go to at this point. Uh, I'm hoping it'll go to the front combine. Combine, but we're about to find out and it is which is great because we want to keep that front combine going and so he's gonna just pull right up here underneath the pipe and yeah it's course play so it'll only pull up as far as it needs to uh, and so sometimes it looks a little bit ridiculous when it's doing some of these kinds of things but that's all right uh, he's got it all figured out he's gonna sit here and unload until this combine is uh, fully emptied and then uh, should back up out of the way and allow the combine to continue uh, on its way with harvesting. And while that's going, we can come in here and look at the settings, the tool settings here. This empty when over is set to 85%. This is the one setting for unloaders, which says when the grain cart that you're in um, is 85% or more fuller after you're done unloading a combine like we just got here, go back and dump yourself into the truck. And so we're at 57% uh, right now. So it's gonna sit here and wait until there's somebody else that needs to be unloaded, which in our case, there's two combines going here. So this other combine is uh, very likely uh, going to need to be unloaded here. It's got its pipe out and everything. So this unloader should detect the second combine being almost full and go and make an attempt to unload it here in just a moment. You can see it's already uh, starting up here. It's undoing its cover and the lead combine is uh, doing the nice thing and waiting for this other combine to get ahead of it. And it might actually be full as well, I'm not sure. And so course play does a great job of just kind of figuring things out and having all of the different uh, vehicles stop and wait and do what it needs to do now because this is on a headland here i think it's stopping and waiting to be unloaded once we get onto the up and down rows this combine would have started moving and unloaded on the go and so i'll demonstrate that here in uh, just a moment as well but before that i want to show what's going to happen here with this combine now that it's uh getting filled up as soon as uh the other combines done dumping into it what does the unloader do it's gonna back up to get out of the way. Make sure that that combine is uh, got plenty of room to do whatever it needs to do. And then the unloader is going to drive back and find a vehicle to unload into. Now, in our case, we've got a truck parked close to the field. And so I think it would actually try and come out here and unload into it. This is not a great spot for uh, loading or unloading a uh, vehicle. So I'm going to drive this uh, truck over here and I'm going to put it right on the edge of the field right here. 
and that's all I have to do is have this field or have this truck parked on the field here. You can see this uh, grain cart driver is going to drive back down over here and we'll see if he's able to figure out where this truck is. Normally, you'd want to park that truck on the field like I did uh, before you start the unload combine course. Uh, but I think that course play is smart enough to figure this out. So let's just take a quick look. All right, so course play is down here and it looks like it's spitting around trying to find a path back to this uh, truck here for us. And it should just drive up alongside this truck and start uh, dumping into it. You'll notice here also I have the empty when over percentages right out on this main menu. So I don't even need to go into my settings screen in order to adjust some of these things. I could uh, just change it here. And you can see as soon as it gets uh, its auger over the truck bed, it's going to start emptying. And so you can see as soon as it's done, it's going to pull up and ahead here to uh, get away just a little bit. And it's going to try and see if anybody is waiting for an unload. And so while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and grab a second grain cart here and we'll show off how getting two of these running is going to work. Generally, when I've got multiple tools going and I want to set up multiple grain carts, I do like to get the uh, headlands pulled off first before I start uh, the second grain cart driver. So I'm going to just uh, leave this guy down here kind of out of the way. And you can see we're already at 95% in this truck. Um, a lot of times it just depends on where your trucks get full and stuff, but I could take this truck and drive off and go empty him out at the bin and it wouldn't cause us uh, any problems if the course play driver detects that there is no empty truck. It'll just stop and throw up a uh, warning for you that says that it couldn't find a, uh, a truck to dump into and it'll just stop and wait where it's at. Now this field is actually pretty nice. I think there's enough space for the driver to make it all the way around the outside of the field here without uh, bumping into any of these trees. And so the course play driver, you can see detected that it had a path here that it could get down to the combines without driving on the crops and uh, while getting around on the outside of the field. So in general, if you're using course play to run your combines, using course play to run your grain carts it has been one of the better experiences that I've had. Uh, it seems to work so much better than other options like uh, auto drive and the driver's smart enough to get back onto the field once there's a field path available. It's going to get turned around here and every once in a while it'll run into a tree or something but for the most part it's pretty good. Like I can't believe it was smart enough to figure out how to get around that tree and uh, get turned in here but course play has come a long way for sure. And again, just like before, he's going to unload this front combine, then uh, wait and unload the second combine. And uh, at that point, we should be all the way around the field and I can show off uh, how this lands mode thing really works and how setting up a second grain cart driver is going to work out for us. Now, given how much corn we've got and the fact that I'm about to set up a second uh, driver here, I'm going to bring a, another larger uh, trailer onto the field here to empty into. Uh, and that's this uh, big semi with the Wilson trailer. I should be able to get a, a couple of grain carts dumped into this. And so I'm going to do it just like the grain truck there. I'm going to get this guy all turned around and put him right here on the edge of the field. Should it give me a nice spot to dump into? And then uh, I'm going to get this guy ready to get started as soon as the combines get down here. And if we jump back over here, you can see this time the grain cart driver and the combine have set up to unload on the go automatically. Uh, I think the previous time was just because we were close to the corner and the other combine was in right in front of it and they weren't able to do it on the go. Uh, but when there's a nice long stretch like this, the combine will... Uh, start moving as soon as the uh, grain cart catches up with it and they will unload a while moving which is really efficient and as soon as we get full here with the grain cart it'll stop and wait for the combine and such to get out of the way here and then it'll find a path to get back up here to the truck 
Now, because everything is right up in this corner all at the same time, I am a little bit worried. Sometimes you end up with some collisions and stuff, but uh, sometimes course play does just kind of figure it out. You can see the grain carts trying to back up and get out of the way, but sometimes it just doesn't work. And this is a great uh, example of you might just have to hop into your uh, course play tractor and I generally like to do it with the grain cart driver is usually the easiest to get out of the way. You just go in here, click on him, drive him out of the way. Now in this case, I can just hit start right away again and let him find a path back up here to the truck. I don't have to really worry about it too much. It looks like he's gonna figure out how to get onto the road here and just to follow the road all the way back down to the entrance here. Um, generally, this kind of stuff, it works so much easier. Once the headlands are off, he'll try and stay on the field and do everything there on the field. But uh, course play is smart enough to grab those road networks and leverage those and then hop back over here onto the field when appropriate and find something to dump into. Now, in this case, I think the thing to dump into that he has found is our other uh, grain cart that's sitting here. So this is another great example. Any empty trailer you have that's not currently part of a uh active course play course is a valid target to be dumped into and so you can see we're dumping into our other grain cart which was parked on the edge of the field so sometimes you're going to have to be a little bit careful with how much and what kinds of pieces of equipment you bring out and where you park them because uh, everything is a valid target for course play that's okay we're going to let him dump all of his uh material into us here real quick and then uh, once he's emptied out he'll be free to move on and start unloading combines and i will show off uh, emptying into a truck here this combine is doing its sharp turner mode here again on the end but as soon as it's done with this it'll uh go and find a new road to cut in on we are in the way with all these vehicles so you do always have to think about where the course play course is going to take it in our case it's going to take it back down this uh headland row so we will need to evacuate it this was not the best place to park our trucks until we were done doing headlands again one of those things i don't tend to uh set up all of the automation with the grain cart drivers and stuff like that until we've done the full headland pass. We should be good to go now though. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this truck right back where it was and we won't run into any more problems while we're doing this course. And I'm gonna leave this mostly full grain truck on the field here as well because I wanna show what happens when a uh, unloader hits a full truck. Here we go. You can see uh, my combine's almost full, but the grain cart driver is waiting back there until it gets uh, to a spot where it's not doing a corner anymore. Of course, play is quite smart to not try and unload on corners and such anymore, which is pretty cool. And the grain cart drivers are really good about avoiding the uh, trucks and other things on the field. So um, this green grain cart should uh, get going as soon as the combines get a chance to move up to a, another part of the field here i don't think it'll try and unload while they're driving on the headlands though so it will wait until they get down here onto the other end to uh, make an attempt to unload you can see the uh, worker will sometimes not find a great way to avoid driving on fruit so even though that setting is activated here Occasionally, if course play is just not able to find a path, he will just drive through your field. It's a little bit wonky looking, but uh, at the end of the day, I'd rather have it do that than just give up and not be able to find a path over to the combine. And so he's going to wait here until he can detect a course. And then uh, as soon as that pipe is all the way out, this grain cart driver will figure out how to get there. So again, while it's not always the most realistic, it does tend to work. Every once in a while, you have to get in and move somebody out of the way. But uh, all in all, it's working pretty good. Those two combines uh, going in one grain cart. Let's show off setting up another grain cart, which is as easy as uh, hitting go. And two grain carts are going to be able to figure this out at the same time. Now, we were full. So it's going to find the first available combine to unload into, or it's going to find the first available trailer to unload into. 
and in our case it's the uh, front hopper of this semi and I think it will always load the hoppers in order and so it'll always try to fill up the front of a multi hopper vehicle first and then do the back and as soon as it's done it's gonna move into a position here and like the other one start looking for a combine that needs to be unloaded in our case we've got uh, the lead combine already moving and i think this grain cart driver has already registered itself to come unload this uh, second combine and so the other grain cart is just going to sit back there by the uh, semi and wait until one of these two combines gets to a point where uh, it needs to be unloaded and calls for an unloader. And it, as you can see, as soon as the grain cart driver gets into position here and it starts unloading a bit, it's going to start moving forward. Sometimes the grain cart's a little slow getting started off here, so it can take a... Uh, second to catch up so depending on your crop and how voluminous it is it might be a couple of false starts before they get going but it almost always figures it out you can see the grain cart driver just fired itself up it's finding a path to come out and start unloading the combine and since we are going uh down the field this way it's going to get turned around and come up behind us so it can unload on the go. Sometimes the grain cart drivers do take a minute to calculate a path and get out to their combines. So we did manage to get full before he got down here, but uh, that's all right. He's uh, trucking it out here anyway, and we'll get here soon. And ah, uh, the reason he's taking so long is we didn't uh, come into this one and adjust his uh, field speed. Uh, that is a vehicle specific setting, so it's always good to uh, hop into each uh, grain cart driver and make sure you've got them set at the field speed that you want them to be at. Again, I like 18 miles an hour. It always feels like a good speed. And there we go. The combine's going to start unloading on the go and we're moving now. You can see that uh, this grain cart driver decided to unload into this grain truck. That was the closest one to him when he looked for a path. And now that that truck is full, the grain cart driver is going to look for a new uh, truck to unload into and having found one is going to just come right back in here and start unloading into the semi truck here and as I mentioned before uh, it always loads from the front hopper to the back and uh, here's one of those things where every once in a while uh, course play gets stuck on something so you can see it got stuck it tried to keep going it didn't work out and it gave up so you will get a little message in the upper right hand corner when that happens sometimes you'll have to hop in here and get them off of the corner or something uh, there's really not a lot to do about that so if it happens to you just uh, hop in and hit that play button again and it should figure it out the second time around if it looks like it's going to do the same thing it did the first time in my case i always like to just uh, shuffle the truck forward a little bit give him a little bit of extra room for wherever he's coming through. He will recalculate a course, and this time it looks like he's gonna be able to uh, hop in here no problem. And when there's a two hopper truck like this, the course plate will back up and start filling the second hopper as soon as the first hopper is uh, filled up. So uh, it just tends to work really, really well. If it does get stuck, you just start it again it's not really a big deal and so with that i think we've covered all of the features and functions of running multiple harvesters and multiple unloaders on the same field at the same time hopefully you found this tutorial video helpful if you have hit that like button and uh, subscribe for more daily farm sim content that's all for today Ketterk, out